Nightline continues from New York City with Martin Bashir. For more than two decades, the archives collected dust hidden from the public by the British government. Some 4,500 pages of documents detailing UFO eyewitness accounts that defense officials recorded and in some cases investigated. But today, light was shone in a dark place when a portion of that archive was declassified. So, did these documents answer the question, are we really alone? Nick Watt now reports. Lieutenant Milton Torres was ordered to keep silent about what happened. Today, we learned the details. May 20th, 1957, he scrambled his Sabre jet from a base in England with orders to arm all weapons and fire on sight. Before he could fire, the erratic, bright blip on his radar simply disappeared. April 1991, an Italian airline pilot approaching Heathrow saw a craft he described as light brown, similar to a missile. He shouted to his co-pilot, look out, look out. The British government investigated this near miss, but came up with nothing. There are some cases, and it's about 5%, uh, that can't be explained. They are genuine unknowns. <laughs> Nick Pope worked for Britain's Ministry of Defence. His job, to investigate UFO um, sightings. Overleaf, we have a sketch. Extremely interesting. People are taken seriously, people are listened to, people are believed, um, and uh, people are prepared to investigate. 11,000 UFO sightings have been reported in Britain since 1959. Records of every one are kept here in the vast National Archive. Only now are the details being revealed. Conspiracy theories have already started, uh, suggesting, for example, that this is a, uh, a whitewash, that this is disinformation. I don't think the Ministry uh, has revealed everything by any means. The facts are too disturbing for the majority of the populace. Some of them actually have bases and have had bases on planet Earth for maybe thousands of years. Any day now, the most contentious file of them all will be opened. The file on Rendlesham Forest, Britain's equivalent of Roswell. I have no explanation for the Rendlesham Forest incident. It was Christmas night, 1980. Guards at two US Air Force bases in Eastern England thought they saw a plane crash in these woods. They investigated and reported a strange glowing object, metallic in appearance. It illuminated the entire forest. The object was hovering or on legs. There is no doubt about it. There's some type of strange flashing red light ahead. Two nights later, the lights returned. Weird. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt recorded this as he walked through the dark forest. Bill, it's coming this way. It is definitely coming this way. There's no doubt about it. This is weird. Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Two lights. One light to the front and one light to the left. Take the flashlights off. There's something very, very strange. Holt's men recorded high radiation levels here at the alleged landing site. It suggests that this object, whatever it was, was unusual in nature. Something was physically present in that clearing. Do you see aliens? Yes, we have done so, yes. When we've been in Blair, which Brenda Butler and her and fellow UFO uh, enthusiasts believe Rendlesham Forest is still you know, an alien destination. When they come, they come in a load of mist, like um, just a whole cloud of mist, and you can actually see them standing in the mist. These are the photographs, but Brenda rarely snaps the aliens she meets. And they've said to us, um, you know, that they don't like photographs. They don't like the flash. Right. Because, I mean, if aliens really do want to make contact with our leaders, why would they chat to Brenda in a remote forest? Ridicule is the principal tool used to discredit the subject. 
But, says Good, the time has come. The policy of our governments has changed, and releasing these files is key. The official agenda is, I've been told on both sides of the Atlantic, is that gradual disclosure has to be the way and my instinct tells me that disclosure process has begun. Something's being tracked, flew off in the direction of Basildon. We're being primed and when we're deemed ready to handle the unsettling truth of aliens among us, then all will be revealed. Have we been attacked? I think there is a conflict situation. Very noisy. Interesting. I'm Nick Watt for Nightline in London. Interesting indeed. Our thanks to Nick Watt. If this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> Just so long as I'm the dictator. <laughs>